2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. Israel has gone into captivity. It's gone because of sins. Verse 24, after the captivity. And the king of Assyria, Assyria took him captive, brought men from Babylon. That's the first time Babylon shows up in the Bible. There it is. And let's see what's associated with Babylon. Israel's gone. And from Kuta, and from Ava, and from Hama, and from Shepherdrium, and placed them in cities of Samaria. So these, including Babylon, these people of these regions, he moves them into Samaria, where Israel, that's Israel's land, but they've been taken out because of their sins. And the heathen said, all right, here, take this land. Take care of it. It's yours. Instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So now the land of Israel has heathen back in it. And so it was at the beginning of the dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. That's Jehovah. The heathen. Therefore the Lord Jehovah sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Well, look at that. Those people don't belong there. And they don't belong there serving another God and having no fear of the God of the land. If the United Nations came along and got rid of Israel and put other people in there, God would only slay them. That land's been promised to Isaac. It's been promised to Abraham. It's been promised to Jacob. It's been promised to the 12 tribes. King of Syria has no business assigning that land to heathen. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nation which thou hast removed, Israel, and placed in the cities of Samaria, know not the manner of God, capital G, of the land, the land, the land of Israel. This God that's in this land, this is his land. He's killing us. We're being wiped off. We don't know anything about this God. Therefore, he, God, has sent lions among them. And behold, they slay them because they know not the manner of God of the land. Now look at that. Here's judgment. God has sent lions and the heathen who don't know nothing in the Old Testament are so stupid compared to modern people today. They say those lions are because of God. And they run to the king and say, King, we need help. What do we do? The God of this land is angry with us. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom he brought from thence. All right, let's, let's, get, the, let's get the idea here. They've gone into Israel. They've taken Israel captive. They have moved them into other cities. So the king has said, go into those other cities and get one of the priests that was there in Samaria. What has been in Samaria? It has been the golden calves of Jeroboam. It has been Baal worship of Jezebel and other religions. So when the king of Syria says, go get a priest, the odds are that priest he gets is not of God. You got more of a mess. And let them go and dwell there, those priests, and let him teach them the manner of God, capital G, of the land. But well, look at the respect to the God by a Syrian king. Get one of those priests. Notice he doesn't say the priests are God. Just get the priests, bring them, let them teach. Oh, yeah, they've been teaching the manner of God. Small G O D. Then one of the priests. Whom they carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, house of God, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. It's the wrong priest. But there's Jehovah. How be it, and regard that wrong priest. Every nation made gods of their own. So we're being taught to fear the Lord, but we have a Christmas tree. At the altar. 
and put them in the houses of high places which the Samaritans had made. The high places of Samaria are still there. Now we got our own gods. Now we're trying to fear Jehovah. Now we got the high places that were there. You know, little groves inside the church house. Worshipping to gods that are not gods. The high places that the Samaritans made are now being turned over to more heathen. They recognize those high places. Oh, that's the same thing we have. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwell. And the men of Babylon, well, look at that, twice in one chapter. First time Babylon shows up, here it is again. Made Sokoth Binoth. That's a false god. Maybe you would look into the churches today, maybe that would be sports. And the men of Koth made Nergal, Nergal, that's another false god. Maybe that's actors and actresses in films, I don't know. And the men of Hamath made Ashima, another false god. Yeah, it's pride and lust, I don't know. And the Evites made Nibbets, Nibhats, that's another false god. Look at all the gods. And Tartuk, that's another false god. And the Sephirvites burnt their children in the fire to Adoramach, another false god, and Anamelech, another false god. Now there's the children being burned again. That god of the Bible is Molech, but look, Molech has two names. Mary is Istar. Istar is Asterisk. That's all it is. The god of the, the gods of the Sephir, Sephirvium. All right, that's America, right there. See all those gods? But we all worship the one true God. Look at all the gods. Check out the phone book in America under religion. Now it says in the world Christian, <laughs> that's two words that doesn't go together. The world Christian encyclopedia says at least 33,000 Christian denominations in America. I don't know what they list Christian at, probably Catholic, probably Protestant, and all that. 33,000 denominations of a Christian title in America. The Hartford Institute proclaims 350,000 religious denominations. That's just not Christian, that's, that's Buddhist, that's Islam, that's all the occults. 350,000 denominations in America, not the world. Gather all the yellow pages, rip out all the, the things that says churches and religions, and add them up. And out of America, Mormonism was born. Christian science was born. Jehovah Witness was born. The charismatic movement out of California was born. And much, much more. Title this section what we're studying today, as I've already titled, Religion. Here it is. And we want to see what God has to say about religion. It's in this section tonight. So they feared the Lord, Jehovah. And made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places. They had their own priests. Do you know an organization that has priests? Both Catholic and Protestant churches have priests of the lowest people. I've been told of the lowest people one time advertising the Catholic church in the Playboy magazine. I don't know if so, but the person that told me that, rectable, I, I have no reason not to believe him. I would think that would be the lowest of the people. Which sacrificed for them in the house of high places. So here's a church house of the high places. Wow, we really moved up in the world. Not only do we have high places, but we got houses of high places. They feared the Lord Jehovah and served their own gods. Oh, oh that's not religion. What is it? What is the definition of religion? There it is. 
People come up to you when you got any public ministry. Well, I'm a Christian. Then why don't you shut up talking to me and go tell other people about Jesus? Uh, I let my light shine. You want a chapter and verse on that? Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You're not doing what Jesus would do. Jesus would not do that. You don't know your Bible. You got another Jesus. After the manner of the nations, Gentiles, whom they carried away from thence. Wait a minute. After the manner of the nations, whom they carried away from thence, that nation is Israel because Israel is the ones they carried away. Israel, the religion that was in Samaria, was no different from the religions of the people around them. And when they came into the land, set in by the king of Syria, they looked at the church. Hey, that's our church. That's our gods. Hey, they were building, they were burning their sons to, the, to they say Molech, but to our God. So the religion was recognizable by the world. Unto this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord. Wait a minute. Verse 33 says they feared the Lord. 34, unto this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord. They think they fear God, but not fearing God, Jehovah. And with their religion, they grown worse and worse and colder and colder to God. They may have started out with a fear of God, but they grew worse. The churches may start it out great with Jesus Christ, but when you get to the last of the singing church, when God's got the barf bag, and the church has proclaimed how great we are, I thought it was how great thou art. Neither do they after their statutes. Or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. They're not following nothing of God. Anybody in that land is not doing what God has told them to do. With whom the Lord had made a covenant, Israel, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods. Israel was doing that. Nor bow yourselves to them, the high places. Nor serve them, burning their sons and their daughters. Or sacrifice to them, burning of the incense in high places. But the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, there's one God that brought them out. Only one God. With great power and an outstretched arm, him shall you fear him shall ye worship, and him shall ye do sacrifice. They did it, so God says, you're out. Bye. You're not going to continue my blessings. If you're not thankful with the fruit uh, oh, the farmer's market that we have, those people do not thank God for those fruits and vegetables. One day God's going to say, okay, fine. You're not going to build, give them a dollar to get vegetables. You're not going to give them a five to get vegetables. You're going to have to receive the mark. And that mark and that person will give you food to eat will be Satan. Manifested in the flesh. He won't be the Christ. He'll be the Antichrist. Shall ye do sacrifice? That's to God. And the statutes and ordinances and the law. And the commandment which he wrote for you. By Moses. Ye shall observe to do forevermore. And ye shall not fear other gods. That's a failure in Samaria. King after king after king. And they did what Jeroboam did. They made Israel to sin. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget. It's forgotten. And ye shall ye fear other gods. Notice that. Fear other gods. Other gods. Other gods. Other gods. That's exactly what they're doing. And when you got Mary as another god that's not Jesus Christ, you're not fearing God. Because if you didn't fear God, if you fear God, you wouldn't have to say, well, we can go through the back door to his mother. Because Jesus is so mean, but if you go through his mother, she's much nicer and much friendlier. If you're to pray to these saints, 
You don't fear God. People don't fear God when you got a public ministry or else they would be turning to God. They don't. But the Lord, your God, still your God, even though you reject him. Listen, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's still Lord God and Almighty the Savior of man. Not of you. But the Lord, your God, for the Israel, for the Jews, ye shall fear. And he shall deliver you out of the hand of your enemies uh, if Syria came and took them. So if Assyria came and took them out of the land, guess who they're not fearing? God sent Assyria. He said, go, go get them. God will send Babylon to Judah. Go get them. God sent Adolf Hitler in the Roman Catholic Church. Go get them. When Jesus Christ comes back, mounted on a horse, he's coming back to destroy their enemies and to set the kingdom. On the throne of David, Jesus Christ to sit on it. Howbeit they did not hearken, see? That's why they lost. They did not fear God. But they did after the former manner. So these nations feared the Lord to a point. If they really feared the Lord, they would have dropped everything they had and served God. And served their graven images. Now, do we not know from Exodus 20 what God feels about those graven images? Are there not churches today all around with graven images? Are there not even Baptist churches with plaques? This has been donated by this person. We want to rebelize this person. We want to inface this person. Look at our great pot that we pass around to collect money. Is there not images? Both their children... And their children's children. Remember what Exodus 20 said about the images to the third and fourth generation? There it is. Son, we worship the great whatever. I'm passing on to you this religion so you can bring your children up in this religion. And my grandchildren go to my church. This is the church of my parents. This is the church of my grandmother. This is the church of my grandparents. We've always been in this church. Damnation. Condemnation. It's not what your family was in. It's what Jesus Christ has done. As did their fathers. So do they unto this day. So see there's religion. There's no salvation. There is. Oh this is my grandparents religion. This is imagery. This is the idolatry. This is. But it's not the way of God. God said this is my way. Well. We don't care about you, God. We don't fear you, God. But if we get, if, if something happens to us, it's the gods. They're angry. We got to do something to appease the gods. And while they're doing that, they are angering God Almighty. So, what a mess. What a mess that Israel's been taken captive, and now what they've done in the land is messing people up. We got immigrants coming to America today, and they got any kind of religion they want. You go in the public school system, they'll give you a mat. They'll have you probably pray, pray East, maybe. I don't know about that. But, but you can get yourself locked up and do the yin-yang and the dancy fancy and all that other Mayberry poles and junk like that that worship gods. But don't you dare bring a Bible. Hey, the freedom of religion by the Constitution of America is, is brought about in 2 Kings 17. Look, everybody's got their own God. And the end result is God's not happy. And God's not blessing the land. So there's that. 